Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again, back with more Entitled Neighbor stories. In this video, my mega entitled neighbor felt the need to start construction and build his driveway through my property. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the video. And the first one is the title story. My neighborhood has been a quiet one pretty much since I moved there. And no, I'm not saying quite like uneventful, and that is honestly normal and without need for comment. Most neighborhoods are not rife with crime and get togethers like block parties and town fairs were already dying down before an unnamed disease came and made them good as extinct as far as I can tell. When I say quiet, I mean that this was a place for people to be at when they were not at work. We had an HOA, but they hardly did anything and I don't even know if I'm still paying dues. There were some kids that were in their teens and were done playing kickball in the street or ding dong ditching. There were plenty of dog owners, but only one that consistently walked his dog. To make it completely clear, I did not know the name of a single person in my neighborhood, that's right, I did not bother to even wave at the dog walker, because I wouldn't know what to call him. Jerry was my next door neighbor, and before the events of the story came along, I thought we were good friends. Over the last 10 years, we have grabbed drinks together a couple times, especially right around the time of my divorce, and have even house sat for each other during vacations. Overall, the trust was pretty much accepted between us and even if we did not talk every day, we had shown that we could be there in a pinch. Surprise pandemic kept us from communicating much though. My job went remote and he was an essential worker, so there was just no reason for us to do much more than send an occasional text as a status update or something. It was not really this that changed things between us even if the pandemic ended up causing the events that it did. A year into isolation, he sent me a text that an aunt he had been close with had died due to complications. Apparently, she was asthmatic, which made me even more dead set on staying isolated, since my mother is as well. I then sent him my condolences through a few gifts that I shipped to his doorstep, he sent profuse thanks over text and we went back to our own lanes in life. I'm still doing my best to not take needless risks, but I no longer isolate either. This means that I'm more willing to chat with Jerry, we even sat on his back porch and shared a few beers once we both felt comfortable with the idea. It did seem that there was some awkwardness in this first time being around each other in nearly two years. I chalked it up to simple rust building up on our small talk skills and thought it would get better. I've never felt the loss from not being friends with a bunch of people in my neighborhood, but I cannot deny that it was good to have a friend there after so much isolation. It would have been better if he had seemed to remember or care for our friendship at all from this point on. Instead though, he drew further in on himself any time we did run into each other and outside of that was about as friendly as a dog walker. Actually no, the dog walker guy was friendly enough to wave back if I waved, I kept forgiving him and giving him time. Oh, he's just grieving his aunt, surely this is a hard time for him. How talkative would I be if I lost a family member important to me? All this kept me waving, even with no response, I would even reach out to see if he needed any support. I did not know how close they had been, but from this reaction closer than I had expected. Maybe she had even been one of those extended family members that raised him when his parents were busy or something, I knew people like that. All this kept going through my head until I got home one day and found Jerry working with a stranger in my driveway. Our driveways have always bordered each other. Maybe that's why I could not avoid a neighborly relationship with him, as I had so diligently done with all my other neighbors. I roll up the window and ask what is going on here. Jerry patted the stranger on the shoulder and said something that I couldn't hear before coming up to my car window. Meanwhile, the stranger starts collecting some tools from the ground and bringing them to a truck in Jerry's driveway. Jerry, meanwhile, came over to me. Hey OP, don't worry about this at all. Hey, what's going on here? This was about when I noticed the chalk markings all over my driveway. Just planning a little bit of work. All the legal issues finally got handled and I got my aunt's inheritance. The old bat was holding back quite a bit of money that none of us knew about when she was alive. Of course she hated just about everyone in the family, so I got most of it. <laughs> that made up more than he had said to me in the last three months combined. I tried to ignore his complete irreverence when speaking about his aunt's death for now and said, Okay, but why are there all these markings on my driveway? Well, I wouldn't say your driveway. At least half of this is mine. He gestured to an area that was definitely on my property. I stayed pleasant as I tried to gently rebuff the assurances that it was his property and got him to move so I could park. 
I parked all over the chalk markings just to be a bit petty, I guess. It helped and it felt satisfying that he was trying to signal me off of it and gave himself a good old back of the head scratch while he looked perplexed and frustrated. He still acted nicer to me than he had in months as I got out. I pointed to the split we both had always seemed to treat as the property line and said one more time that anything on my side of that line was my property. Now, I'm not a perfect human being and I've made mistakes before. Some of those mistakes have bit me in the ass later, so I like to fact check before I totally commit to a stance. I ended up going into City Hall and looking through some records. I found that, at least according to the relatively straightforward plans, the property lines match what I expected them to. This does make sense considering these are the property lines that were offered with the house and that Jerry and I had been respecting all this time. Jerry was less and less concerned with sense and logic as time went on though, the contractors were back in my driveway when I got back and were really confused when I started laying down the facts for them before Jerry could make it back. I mentioned that I had gone and looked over the property lines at City Hall. Jerry responded, It could be an honest mistake, OP. Those documents are hard to read. I've looked over them recently with a few colleagues of mine and we came to a different conclusion. I'm not sure if it quite surpasses Paddy and heads towards actual retaliation, but I did drive over the small cones and ribbons that the contractors had been setting out. I gave them plenty of time to move out of the way though, no reason to injure them for someone else's obstinance. That was a Wednesday. I left my car parked there even as supplies and materials began to be delivered to Jerry's driveway. From what I could tell, he was quite thrilled with his aunt's passing because he couldn't help but flaunt that he had quit his job. He apparently wanted the extra large driveway to have plenty of space for his nice imported car he got to. It all made me sick when I remembered how he called the woman an old bat. The weekend came and I finally had enough free time to go back to City Hall. This time I got a hold of a property surveyor license by the city, the paddy back and forth continued because by the time I was back from City Hall, all the cones and ribbons had been set up again. I stayed clear of them this time so that the property surveyor didn't have to deal with them in this way. Jerry came over and tried to harass me but I simply brushed him off and said I was busy. When he kept trying to talk I just pointed over to his contractors and asked if he thought they needed his help with their job since the property surveyor had this handled. I couldn't help but notice the surveyor smirk a bit when Jerry threw a round of curses at us and stormed off. With the surveyor's official confirmation of my suspicions, I filed a cease and desist letter against Jerry. And with that, I should have been done with it. Jerry and his contractors did seem to stay away from my driveway for the next week or so as they started construction. They made slow going of it though and I couldn't stay vigilant the whole time. I had to go visit my parents but don't worry, I did my best to social distance. I got back from my weekend away to find half of my driveway in the process of demolition. It was torn up and a real eyesore now. It was obvious that they were going to get on with more but this must have been all that Jerry could convince them to do on a weekend when they hadn't been planning to work actually. The shock on his face when he saw the cops show up at his door that very afternoon was priceless. He was stuttering and tripping over his own tongue as he looked from the citation to the cops to me standing in the back. Anger did begin to burn out the shock and I worried that this would not slow him down. The next day though he did come and apologize to me one on one. Of course all he really did was throw one week sorry at me and offer me the contact information of his contractor so they could repair my driveway. Now it might seem that I have the patience of a saint when I say that I was fine leaving it there. I was not exactly wallowing in poverty, I had a good job and had kept up work throughout the pandemic. I had split custody of one kid but I was more than happy to pay the child support since I knew my ex used it for its intended purposes. I could fix the driveway and I'm not good at holding grudges anyway. I was not about to go grab a drink with Jerry but I could let him have his fantasy that the apology was not weaker than hot water trying to masquerade as coffee. A few weeks go by and dog walker is going by while I'm clearing out some of the last demolition rubble so I can start to figure out what I'm gonna do about my driveway. I think nothing of it as I wave and turn back to my work, except I soon have a wet nose sniffing the back of my leg and turn to find Dog Walker shaking his head as he looks at the destruction. Jerry did this? I nodded. Then the Dog Walker guy told me all about how Jerry had been encroaching on his land and had actually moved his fence further onto Dog Walker guy's territory. He had even come to ask Dog Walker to stop mowing his lawn, he asked how I had gotten Jerry to stop. 
I described the work with my lawyer and the cops, Dogwalker chuckled at that sadly and said that he could hardly afford a lawyer and wondered if the cops would do as much for him without any help on the legal end. I had not really cared that much about it if I had to fix the driveway for myself. I was a boring bachelor who had nothing else to do with my weekends. I didn't want to leave someone else in need though and I was tired of this aggressive attitude from Jerry that I was too familiar with and that Dog Walker had experienced as well. So I contacted my lawyer again. We had proof of the state of the driveway before and after the cease and desist letter and the official property surveyor statement going into the courtroom. If those were not enough then the testimony from various neighbors about his aggressive behavior certainly were. The property surveyor even threw in a statement about his own interaction with Jerry. I even got the surveyor to check out Dog Walker's land and confirm his claims of trespassing from Jerry. All things considered, it should have been settled before the courtroom, but Jerry did not like my offer and I knew I could win in the courtroom. Jerry ended up with some pretty severe charges of harassment and illegal construction along with the obvious trespassing too. This got him a year of community service and, more importantly in my mind, fines and restoration fees to make him regret all his frivolous decisions that disrespected his aunt's memory. He does not live next door anymore nowadays and I have once again befriended my next door neighbor as well as a few others. Me and Dog Walker are on a first name basis now. No, it's not Dog and I even met a woman in the neighborhood that makes me think I might not completely throw in the towel on love after one divorce. And the next one is titled Lawsuit Destroyed Her. This was posted on r slash malicious compliance. So backstory, I have a 5 years old daughter with my ex-wife. We broke up about 2.5 years ago. We had some up and downs during our marriage. We never argued or fought per se, but we did negotiate a lot with strong emotions and opinions. Yet we always managed to find some common ground to stand on together. That's why it kind of caught me by surprise when she told me that she wanted a divorce. I cried for a couple days when went fishing and then started planning on how to figure things out. Because neither of us had enough income at that point to keep our car and or house, we agreed that I should take care of selling the car and she would get a realtor to start selling our home. Well, turns out I had to do both. Anyway, we had more debt than money and then she tried to leave all the debt to me while she would start from a clean slate. However, I would not let her and I made sure everything we owned and every bit of debt would be split evenly. We agreed that our daughter would live with both of us, splitting the time evenly as our daughter had the right to having two parents. We promised each other to act civil. This did not last long though. We also had agreed that since our salaries were pretty even, neither of us would pay child support. We also agreed that she would take care of buying most of the clothes etc for our kit since she would get the child benefit, about 100 euros per month here in Finland paid by the government to support raising offspring. After the breakup she started mail ordering new furniture for herself even before she had found a new apartment for herself. Kinda obvious but she really did not have the money for it either. Two weeks later she moved out and a week later I heard from our kit that she had a new man. I didn't really care honestly, just raised some eyebrows. She would often call in sick to her work, usually for BS reasons and when her boss gave some feedback she didn't fix her attitude but instead she just quit. She applied to a school and got in. After about two months she quit the school too and started demanding me to pay child support. We got a professional to weigh in and agreed that I still would not pay a dime to her because she herself had caused her income to collapse. As a goodwill act I offered to pay for our daughter's insurance. I thought the matter was settled but then she got pregnant for her new man a few months after our breakup. After our divorce was final, there's a 6 month reconsideration time before the judge calls it, she married her new man. These things empowered her into demanding for money again and again and again. So now that you know what kind of person we are dealing with, let's move on to the actual case. Last fall she yet again demanded money to support our kid. She was working again and I knew she used our kid as an excuse because she had expressed envy towards my ability to control my finances to a point that even when I had the same amount of money I could even eat in restaurants etc. I told her that if she needed child support for legitimate reasons I would of course help but all the expenses would have to be calculated properly to know the right amounts she would need. Instead she demanded I would pay her 200 euros per month and she would take care of all the expenses regarding our daughter. She didn't have any real reasons for the demand other than her need for control. She had always been someone who wanted to have the last say in things. On top of her demand this time she threatened to sue me if I didn't pay her. I pretty much laughed at it until I got a message from her lawyer. 
At that point, I messaged my ex telling her from now on I would only discuss this matter via our lawyers and started looking for a lawyer myself. During the next couple months, things started to look really bad for her case. After getting the papers from the court, I noticed her case was based on false data, she and her lawyer had not asked for my income and expenses before they sued me and she had estimated my income to be a lot more than it actually was. Also, my expenses were estimated to be smaller than they actually were. At this point, I messaged my ex and asked if she's sure she doesn't want to settle. She didn't, so I decided to go with some malicious compliance and didn't try again. After we both calculated every income and expense of both parties with the help of our lawyers, I and my lawyer confirmed that she had enough money to raise our kid. Not only that, but it turned out that she actually had more money than me for it, monthly income minus living costs, medicine etc. I burst out laughing at the absurdity of her case. Even more so when she tried to twist things to her favor by sending false evidence to us and the judge which we noticed instantly. A couple days go by and my lawyer calls me. She had gotten a call from my ex's lawyer saying that he had noticed my ex is lying and the whole case is based on lies and the lawyer wants to settle. It looked like my malicious compliance would not even go through until my lawyer got a message that for some reason they won't settle after all. So it was game on. The judgment, we went to court, the judge was annoyed but composed, he asked my ex's lawyer about their demands. The lawyer started by saying, first I'm gonna tell a bit of the backstory. And the judge cut him off telling him to just state the demands. After a few seconds of silence, the lawyer told the judge, no demands. And the judge was both dumbfounded and livid, asking, then why are we even here? To which my lawyer said something along the lines of, that's what we are asking too. Then the judge asked my ex's lawyer, to be clear, didn't you want to settle? And the lawyer sheepishly told the judge that my ex would not agree to settle, they were so embarrassed it was glorious. Like some kind of divine karma being served right at my Karen of an ex. The judge ordered us to go to a meeting room for 20 minutes and to come back with a settlement agreement. Because she had more money we negotiated that she would pay for our kids hobbies, insurance etc to compensate for the difference. The judge verified it and my party left the courtroom very happy. My ex, on the other hand, was balancing between being angry and embarrassed. Now onto the fallout. A couple of weeks ago my ex demanded that we would make changes to the schedule on how our kid would swap homes. I declined saying we have an agreement already. She then threatened to sue me, to which I just reminded her about the last time she wanted to get what she wants by suing me, asking if she really wants to do it again. She got mad and I just ignored it. About a week ago she sent me a message saying that she had a fight with her husband, police were called because she attacked him and now she wanted a divorce. The police had to inform Child Protective Services since there were kids present, mine included. Basically, her whole life has gone down the drain, two kids to two different fathers, two divorces before she has even turned 30, a lot of debt and expenses and it looks like our kid will be spending the majority of her time at my place. Which is what our kid has wanted for the past two-ish years. And yeah, ripe stars, let me know what you think about this story in the comments. I gotta say though, even though I'm happy for OP that everything turned out the way it did, I feel a little bit bad for the kid because it seems like a lot of stress and no kid should go through a situation like this. I would say that this can be very traumatic and hurtful for the kid, even though the mom seems to be the douchebag here. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.